Would you like to come out today? Oh, yes, please, said Edward. So they lit his fire, made lots of steam, and Edward puffed away. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to yet another episode of Headcanon Facts. I promise these ones were real, unlike the last one. <laughs> Fact 1. The last orders bell of the Toby Jug, a pub at Farfarquhar, is one of Toby's old bells that cracked. It was donated by Toby's troop. We also gave a recording of it to Mike O'Donnell and Junior Campbell for use in the television series. Fact 2. In 1976, due to a motive power crisis, the NWR would construct its P-Class 262s, named the Lakes. The boilers, fire boxes, smoke boxes, chassis blocks, and other various parts were sourced from Crovin's Gate sock by the VR Center components, with the calves being standard ones the works had acquired. Notably, the class has much lower running boards compared to the VR standards, and they have splashes that sit atop their wheels. This was symbolic of the Fat Controllers Railway establishing its independence as a separate entity, and thus straying away from the norm. The first of the class, Glee Lowy, or Glenn for short, would roll out of the shops in February, and after a successful test would be joined by two classmates, Lowy Maction, Mac, and Chibier Ulf, Chelsea, three months later. I probably butchered those names. While technically being mixed traffic, the engines are primarily used on express passenger services, thanks to their high top speed. When recorded on an express run, Glenn reached a speed of 101 miles per hour. He was going down Gordon's Hill, but this is still a testament to their speed. Due to their light axle load, they can run on almost all of the branch lines on the network. Their versatility and reliability would make them an immense success, with more classmates being planned. However, the Hats are always hesitant to build their own engines, when there could be ones out there that need homes, so these plans have been continually pushed back. Fact 3 On the subject of newly built steamers, the Northwestern Railway's Hair class was built to combat the growing need for a class of engines to tackle light goods trains on the branch lines across the island. The three members were built in 1989, and are all 06s to allow for a lower axle load. Like the rest of the MWR's in-house designs, they use parts from the BR standard catalog, with a top on flare, of course. They are christened hares due to their ability to quickly start off with longer trains, and their general sprightliness. They are named Snowshoe, Snow, Jackrabbit, Jackie, and Arctic, Arwen, respectively. They have quite high tractive efforts with 062s, with Jackie allegedly outpulling Henry on one occasion. This is most likely due to the third cylinder between the frames, cleverly retrofitted by Crowing's Gate. The trio moved from branch to branch, doing whatever goods work needs done. In the busier seasons though, you can often see them double-heading trains bunker to bunker on the main line. Fact 4 The Soto Railway Repair is called DOC, as in D-O-C. Nobody knows where they got the nickname, it's just what everybody's called them ever since they arrived on the island. Fact 5 He'd never tell you, but Edward has a secret prejudice for cranes. Ever since he was tipped over by a crane in his youth, he's had constant bad experiences with them. He's been dropped, had a ship's boiler slammed into his side, had a crate fly into his face, and a small one even fell on him once. Despite this, He's good friends with the breakdown crane Judy and Jerome, Rocky, and Harvey. He had a joking rivalry with A.W. Dry's crane tank in the old days, but as they've grown, this has been put to rest. Cranky would never say it, but he likes Edward quite a lot. And now for the questions. Tass asks, Is there any special slash privately owned trucks on the island? Oh, hi, Tass. Why, of course, there are dozens! Some notable ones include Rickety, Scruffy, Fred, Reed the Recycling Truck, Bolt, the Farquhar Quarry Trucks, the same ones who accidentally nearly killed Toby, Old King Cole and Sun Cole, two coal trucks and Thomas and Branch Line, Old Bennett, and of course, Tiny the Container Truck. Anna Cruz asks, Does Soder have a B12? It used to, but that engine is long gone now.
think Engine Media asks, what is the railway's most profitable contract? Hmm, that's an interesting one. Nowadays, thanks to the Fat Controller being a shrewd businessman, the railway has many sound contracts, so I'm not exactly sure which would bring in the most revenue. My best guess would be the contract between the Fat Controller and the aluminum company at Peel Gosrit, as the company is producing more aluminum than ever before. They also ask, the engines and staff do have movie night. What is their favorite, and least favorite, movies they've watched? Ah, I love this one! The overall top 5 decided by the engines and the crews, in no particular order, is the Titfield Thunderbolt, Toy Story, Star Wars A New Hope, Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure, and Ghostbusters. As for least favorites, they've not really got any that are different from your normal lineup, apart from those two Miller specials, especially because they weren't based on real events. And last but not least, Rob's Home Archives asks, Do the engines on the Stout Director's Railway run to Sodor? No. No. Well, that's all the anecdotes I've got today. I'll see you all next time. This is Zero Zero, signing off.